And welcome back, Roster Watch Nation. It's your friendly neighborhood trash man. On behalf of rosterwatch.com, where we have all the fantasy information that you will ever need to dominate your leagues from draft throughout the championships. I'm um, broadcasting today from sunny Austin, Texas, uh, riding high from <laughs> the recent uh, Houston Rockets trade where they picked up Russell Westbrook. Um, it'll be a reunion for him. Um, and James Harden, really excited about that. I didn't, didn't think the Rockets were going to have a chance um, with all the moves that were made in the West. Anyways, let's move on to football. Um, today I'm going to be talking about some guys who I think are in just the right place at the right time. These are players who aren't necessarily flashy, high-profile players. They aren't sexy picks and drafts. But they're going to be players, in my opinion, who are going to provide ample value in fantasy this season because of where they are and the teams that they play and, 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 the, and, the, and the coaches that they play for. Um, so first off, there's a player you might be slightly familiar with that's Cole Beasley, formerly of the Dallas Cowboys. He's so new to the Bills that they don't even have any pictures of him in a Bills uniform yet. Um, but Josh Allen is already referring to Beasley as his safety blanket, and that's good news, um, especially coming from a young quarterback who's you know still finding his legs in the league. I think Beasley will be a nice, a nice often out, often used outlet um, for Allen there in Buffalo. Um, some are saying that Beasley could even lead the Bills in receptions this season, um, which is not really a high bar considering that uh, Zay Jones led them in receptions with 56 last season. But um, I expect things to improve for the Bills offense this year. Uh, offensive coordinator Brian DeBall favors a short passing attack, so that also works in Beasley's favor. Um, the Bills did add John Brown also in free agency, but he's a big play guy. He's not, uh, he's not going to be a guy who's going to get a lot of volume in your offense. Um, so it doesn't really scare me, I guess, in comparison to a Beasley. If you're looking for Beasley, uh, to use Beasley in PPR leagues, which I think is where he's most valuable. Um, so, yeah, I think Beasley's going to be a guy who's going to offer you considerable vo value, especially in PPR leagues this season. Um, he's just in the right place at the right time. Second player in my right place, right, right time for the AFC is Dante Moncrief. Uh, he's bounced around the league a lot, formerly a Colt, formerly a Jaguar, and he's done respectably on both of those teams. Um, word out of Pittsburgh is that he's already working into the number two spot um, there. Ben Roethlisberger loves his work ethic, work ethic uh, loves how quickly he's picked up the offense. Uh, Moncrief is a big guy, um, tall, um, covers up a lot of space. He's going to be a red zone target there. Um, maybe their primary red zone target. And, you know, he's you know he's that type of player, and he can jump up and get the ball. Um, he's got he's going to be contending with James Washington and um, Deontay Johnson um, there for receptions behind Juju Smith-Schuster, but. I think he's going to be working ahead of those guys. I think he's going to be the number two in Pittsburgh. He's just in the right place at the right time um, in the vacuum that is Antonio Brown's absence. Up next on my right place, right time for the AFC is Gio Bernard. Bernard hasn't gone anywhere. Um, he's on the same team he's always been on, but he's got a new head coach. Um, who wants to spread the ball around a lot more. Um, he's already been lining up all over the field in OTAs. I think they're going to use him considerably more this season. I think they're going to use both him and Mixon, so I don't think it's going to be a deal where um, Mixon's going to lose touches or carries. I just think, think they're going to run the ball a lot more this season, use the short passing game a lot more this season. They need more playmakers on that offense, and they haven't been utilizing Grenard enough, and they I feel like they've already noticed that. Um, so... Expect Bernard to get more action this season. I don't know how much more. Um, this is the garbage grab after all. But um, look out for him there um, in Cincinnati. Oh, also, I wanted to say I was looking at pictures of Bernard and I realized something. It kind of struck me that he looks considerably like Hugh Jackson, uh, <laughs> former head coach of the Cleveland Browns. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. You take a look. 
and decide. Let me know what you think if you could be his long lost son. Next on my list for right place, right time, right time, right place, however you want to put it, is Matt Lacoste, now of the New England Patriots. Again, no no shots of him as a Patriot yet. Although as a Giant, you can kind of squint and see him as a Patriot. And actually in this picture, he's playing against the Patriots. So there you go. Uh, Matt Lacoste isn't an exciting player by really any means, but he's a big guy. Um, he had a 4-6-4, four, four, I believe, um, 40 when he entered the league. Um, 2015, 255 pounds, six foot six, big guy. Um, you know, he's going to be coming up in the absence of Rob Gronkowski, who the Patriots utilized um, really more than any other tight end in the league. I don't think he's going to get that kind of action by any means, but the Patriots have been known to use n lesser known players to great effect. And I think Lacoste will be a similar example. I don't expect him to put up um, tight end one numbers, but I, he could. But I, I, I absolutely think he's going to be a tight end streamer this year. I think he's going to be a guy that you can plug and play, and expect to um, get a considerable number of targets in that offense. Brady still loves going over the middle. He still loves going to his tight end, and I think you're going to see uh, Matt Lacoste used more than he's ever been in the league. And you know. There really just isn't a whole lot of competition in that Patriots um, receiving core right now. I mean, you still have Julian Edelman. Um, you have the rookie and kill Harry. Um, and you have some running backs that will catch passes. But I think in the red zone, I think Lacoste is going to be um, one of the primary targets for the Patriots this season. And last but not least, oh, no, that's Hugh Jackson again. Keeps popping up. Is Frank Gore of the Buffalo Bills. I was able to find a picture of him, at least in a practice jersey for the Bills. Um, LaShawn McCoy's been begging to get Frank Gore on the team for a couple years now, and he's finally there. Frank Gore, who is actually 36 years old this season, um, he's found the fountain of youth, apparently. Um, he led the Dolphins in yardage last year, 722 rushing yards a year ago. Um, McCoy seems very willing to give up touches in this offense. I think he feels like he's, you know, you know, had had his wheels run off the past couple years. And the Buffalo Bills run the ball more than any other team in the league um, historically for the past several years. So you're going to see a lot of running out of the backfield uh, for the Bills. Um, rookie Devin Singletary is there too. He's actually been getting um, first team reps along with Gore. He's been getting first team reps. Um, but he's a lot smaller. He's five foot seven, barely pushing 200 pounds. Um, so I don't see him as a guy that they're going to use down on the goal line um, at all, really. Whereas Gore can be that guy. Um, he can score a touchdown. We expect the Buffalo Bills offense to be better this season. So we can expect them to be in scoring position more often. Um, so I expect Frank Gore to get more action. Um, not exactly how much yet, um, but he's a guy that you can pick up really anywhere in your draft. You don't even really have to draft. You can pick him up after the draft um, in a lot of these leagues. But I think he's going to um, show up for you um, in fantasy, at least in a pinch. This is, after all, again, the garbage grab, where we talk about uh, some of the uh, players you wouldn't necessarily expect to show up for you on game day, but you just might be surprised. Um, or these are guys who you could use in daily. Um, to shore up your lineups, your rosters, and they could actually pop off. Um, so yeah, these aren't a lot of guys you'll find um, other outlets mentioning, talking about in depth, but this is the way we like to do things here at Roster Watch, and especially on the Garbage Crab. Anyway, these are my right place, right time uh, players for the AFC. We come up with the NFC players real soon. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the content. Give us a follow at Roster Watch. Sign up for a pro membership on rosterwatch.com. It's cheaper than a cheap cup of coffee. Or at least that's what Alex tells me. I don't know. I don't drink coffee, but maybe I should. Um, anyways, this has been The Trash Man. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, be ready.